having some more uh, femininity uh, on these role plays. So we are looking to oblige. <laughs> yes, and so Teresa and Lucianne, here's, here's the deal. And everybody out there, so the more we can create um, acceleration with people that would love to come on, that are uh, successful and accomplished folk, like these fine, uh, amazing entrepreneurial women, that would be uh, hugely awesome. So we are creating massive acceleration these days in the role plays, and we are uh, in conversations with some rock star-like people. So if anybody can call Oprah, we're uh, ready to have Oprah on for next week. Um, if you guys can, Lucianne, do you know Oprah? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So how about you, Teresa? You, are you I good with Oprah? Like she's on my list. Excellent. So we'll be looking to have them on. Jay, how about yourself? Do you? I sent you, her uh, a message Oprah? through. I actually sent her a message through Instagram. I'm not lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you never think, know. And I think we sent the cease and desist letter because my 2020 vision videos were out for like almost a year uh, when Oprah had her 2020 vision tour. So uh -huh. we're still in discussions about that interesting dynamic. Mm -hmm. So um, hello to everybody. So coming into this, uh, we have Lucianne on the one hand, who is uh, a realtor, virtual realtor, uh, to celebrities and high net worth individuals incredibly successful for many years in real estate. Anything else about your incredible background you'd like to share, Lucianne? Thank you. Well, I'm very proud to be a mother of two and married for almost 19 years. Oh my goodness. And how old are your children? My son is 14 and my daughter is 13. And how are they, how are they uh, adapting in the corona scenario? Because you're, you're in, where are you live right I'm now? I'm in New York. That's what I thought, New York, yeah, I'm right? in New York. So they're, they're, they're actually, I'm enjoying it because I've worked very hard my entire life and I feel like I'm buying my time back of spending time with my children awesome. that I never had an opportunity to before. Awesome. And, and what part of the city? Do you live in the city? Oh, I'm in, I'm in Queens. I actually live in Queens, in okay. Whitestone. So everybody can realize, I mean, this is, you know, the epicenter in the country of where Corona is. And, and what's the, the vibe and the energy in your neighborhood, your area related to Corona, Luciana? It's, it's empty. There's really no one around. Um, there's a couple of folks here and there uh, walking around to get some exercise, but otherwise it's pretty much empty and people just going to the supermarket to buy food, but people are afraid. They're really afraid to go out. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just, I hope, um, glad that you're safe and I hope and pray you continue to stay safe as does everybody in New York city. We're about 20 minutes from the George Washington bridge where we sit right now. So we're sort of the secondary, secondary epicenter in Bergen County, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, high numbers as well. So we're all staying safe. And this is actually that for a couple of different reasons. I'm here in uh, Calgary a lot today. There's nobody here um, at all. So, you know, it's, it's bizarre, um, you know, seeing it empty and nobody here. It's my first time in the office in over a month. I had to grab a couple things. And so, yeah, we're here today and it's just a very weird environment, like parking lot empty, nobody here. Uh, and Teresa, how about yourself? What's present? Well, with wow. your amazingness. Well, let me, let me introduce you. Uh, 170 like, agents. 170 agents. Drop the mic. Agents. Oh, excuse me. So we'll call it 180 because <laughs> we'll effectively post 175 equals round up. So approximately 180 agents will go with and a uh, remarkable story. And so thank you for being here. And what's present for you or anything else you want to add or share about uh, life in, in the world of Corona and life, life in the world, world of Teresa. Corona is a little weird. We have a blended family with five children. Wow. So having just all being sort of locked up in the house, my husband working in the dining room as he's a, actually a commercial lender. So he's been processing uh, PPP applications for the last wow. several days. I'll go to bed. He's up working. I wake up. He's still working. Um, so that's what it looked like. That's what it looks like on the back end. Um, that is what it looks like. Uh, yeah. Everybody's a little, you know, edgy, but I'm blessed to be in Western New Jersey. I'm in Huntington County. We live on eight acres, so we have plenty of outdoor space. We can get outside, and we've, you know, yeah. been lucky enough to do some projects. Beautiful. Um, and in terms, of, you mentioned blended family, so I'll ask. Yeah. Um, is everybody moving, some of the children moving back and forth? Yes. Yeah. So how does that, can I ask this, how does that work? Cause I'm, you know, I'm encountering some of those dynamics myself. Is everybody aligned or how is that working? Cause that, that could add a lot of 
multiple layers of extra stress for some, I'm sure. It adds multiple layers in general. Um, and so this is extra, <laughs> you know, like I right. think we're, we're aligned in the sense that um, we don't want my stepdaughters, the, they're the 17 and 15 year old. Um, we don't want them to, we don't want to not see them. Their mother doesn't work outside of the house. So their exposure is limited. Um, so we've just been keeping it the same status quo where they, they still come on the weekends and one night a week, they spend Easter with us and we're just trying to keep it as normal as possible. And I, and I think like at the end of the day, if something were to happen and someone were to get ill, we're still all a family. So. No, um, awesome. Yeah. And, and for some, I think it, it creates complexity around the issues of like what people consider to be appropriate um, quarantining and social distancing. And so it can get layered to who's exposing themselves to who, but considers it to be quarantine and isolation still. So, you know, my heart, uh, hopefully all that maintains are for anybody in a blended family dynamic. Um, you know, my heart and is there and my prayers are there because I can get that it can create a lot of tension really, really quickly. Yes. So congratulations cool. on navigating all that uh, as well as you are. So thank you. And thank you, uh, fine ladies, for being here. So Jay Levine, thank you for a uh, guest co-hosting and role-playing and what's present for you, Jay, as here you are on your second Real Raw. Yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly excited to be here on my second Real Raw, and this is one that really hits home for me. I'm incredibly empathetic uh, to both realtors here in this uh, environment that we have right now with Corona, but I'm extremely excited to hear from both of them coming from kind of two different styles of real estate. Uh, and uh, listen, I also want to say, make sure everybody else is feeling we're, we're, we're on fire here, and I'm excited to just see the four of us. I thought we'd have like a bigger group, but I'm now co-hosting, I'm judging, I love it. I love yeah. it. Role playing. So that is what we are absolutely present to as far as today goes. And um, yeah, like that, that's where we are. And uh, Lucy and Teresa, I'd love to invite you back to be judges for at some point this week, if that's something that resonates for you. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll have some fun with that. So got a whole bunch of uh, accelerations happening with the real raws and, and what have you. And one other distinction. So we're going to have, we're going to have some fun today. So actually, before we do that, Lucien, just what's present for you and sharing with everybody, how would you describe what the real raw role plays are? So have you, uh, have you seen them before or no? I briefly watched the one yesterday with Jay and I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> because you were really put on the spot. Um, but then I kept telling myself, you know what? This is a challenge and I think no one is going to judge us. This is just an opportunity for us to grow and learn from one another. I've seen you in action during your seminar. I've seen you at doing the huddle calls in the morning. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. But <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. After yeah. Yeah. West I think West. my level five listening, Teresa, says that Lucy Ann's throwing it down. She so is. We'll, yeah. I'm not going to lie. After watching Les Brown, I, I am like completely intimidated because I <laughs> – I am like, that man is like butter. <laughs> yeah, no, I am glad I didn't watch it. <laughs> incredible job. So Teresa, for you, what are the real raws all about? Like, how would you describe what they are to people? Um, I, I feel like, okay, so it's a, it's sort of an expansion of um, the huddle, right? And, yeah. and a little bit you know, you have more time to find out a little bit more about who Lucienne is. And then at the same time, you have an opportunity to um, trial the formula yes. in, in your application with the guidance of Sean, who hopefully will stop us when he needs to. <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you, Teresa. So here's what we're doing um, for today. So um, we are going to have a new innovation on the real raw. We're going to do two rounds. And the first round, the first round is going to be about um, the first two steps of the formula. So in three minutes, you're going to build rapport, create a relationship with the other person. And so everything in the first round, the scoring system, and we're going to ask people that are watching, this is going to be our first step into this space. If you're watching, we're gonna ask you to give a very integrity filled score on each round that goes by. 
to see what's present for you and maybe comment about what it was. So in the first round, um, each of these amazing participants, Teresa and Lucianne, are gonna be communicating with Jay and they're gonna be building rapport with Jay and they're gonna be accessing his listening before we get into in the second round, it's where you're gonna talk about your unique identity, your agreement formation, but the first round scoring is gonna be based in how strong you feel the connection they build with Jay is, how much Jay sees his future in Lucianne and Teresa because of the questioning, the depth of their listening, how they're building rapport. So key indicators would be, Jay is answering questions with an emotional, energetic response. They're asking beautiful, open-ended questions to him. They're forwarding the conversation. There's fluidity. And as you see Jay forgetting this is a role play, that means score is going through the roof. Where he's dropping into his heart, he's opening up and sharing. And Jay, on your hand, remember, this is going to be a three-minute dynamic. And you're looking to give succinct answers, but genuine. Mm -hmm. So, like, one question doesn't equal Jay talking for a whole bunch. You're trying to give succinct answers. And to remind you of your succinctness, I'll be like, I'll just say the word time, right, to keep forwarding the action. Sound good, Jay? My level five listening says I talk too much. Yes. Your level on. five listening is tuned in that when somebody asked you a question the other day, you spoke for four minutes. So <laughs> that would not be what is optimal in service of the audience or Luciana or Teresa. Sound good? It sounds great. All right. So we're going to do a little Facebook Live as well. When would you mind? As we tune in. So we're going to get my Facebook picking this up. The Unblinded Facebook picking this up. We're going to be coming from all angles. So Lucianne, uh, Teresa, do you have any questions so far? No, I think uh, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm very genuinely interested in knowing more about Jay. So this is going to be easy. Boom, Lucy Edge keeps throwing it down. So <laughs> I, have, I have fingers under the uh, table. And um, let's see, since Lucy Ann, you're from out of New Jersey. So you're the away team. You're from further away. You pick the numbers first. It's like tossing a coin. Just say one or two. Two. Okay. okay. It is two. So that is remarkable that um, people keep getting it at two. So I think it's the third straight they've had two. So you have won the toss. So would you like to, just, but before you say yes or no, so your choice is, would you like to go first or second in round one? And if you choose to go second, right, in round one, if you choose to go second, then Teresa will pick if she goes first or second in round two. If mm -hmm. you pick first in round one, then you'll get to go, then you get to choose again in the second round. Got it. Okay, so which, what do you choose? I would like to go first. Okay, so you'll get to choose again in the second round. Hold on one second. So folks on Facebook, we're tuning in here. We have uh, Lucianne, uh, rock star, realtor, celebrities, super high net worth individuals, uh, living in New York, Queens, uh, both phenomenal moms here, Teresa. Teresa uh, lives in New Jersey, has 178 agents. Um, correct, Teresa? that work for her and her amazing brokerage. And they're in the real raw role play. So we're gonna keep this on for Facebook for at least through Lucy Ann's. And then if you wanna join us over on the other side, watching this through um, the real raw role play link uh, and or through uh, unblinded Facebook. So Lucy Ann, what is present for you? We're gonna say over here so we're not distracting. You wanna come, come this way so you got that cool. So Lucy Ann, uh, I'm sorry, Jay, three minutes, take it away. So Jay, such a pleasure meeting you. I am so intrigued and I am so excited to have a conversation with you because I've seen thousands of business cards, but I've never seen a business card that it was so warm and humble with someone in front that he's hugging. I would love to know what your thoughts were when you created that business card. And I would love to know a little bit more, a little bit more about, about your business. Oh man, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking a few minutes. I just want to be clear. I only have about three minutes to talk uh, to you, so I apologize. Uh, but actually, you know what? I, my wife made those cards. Really? Yeah. It is, it had to come from a woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it is so warm. I want to just like hug the two of you. When I saw that business card, it's just unbelievable. So how long have you been in, in real estate? Uh, just over four years now. Oh, wow. My son's birthday. Interesting. So how old is your son? Uh, he's about to be nine, May 23rd. Wow. So now you know what true love is, right? And that's... Yeah, and a daughter. Wow. And a daughter. 
Oh, amazing. Me too. I have a buena girl. That's exciting. So what made you want to get into real estate? I'm, I'm, I'm always very intrigued because everyone has such a unique story. So if, I know we have very short time, but maybe you can tell me very briefly. Uh, yeah, I can, I can, I can try. Um, I didn't really necessarily want to get into real estate. It wasn't something I had thought about as a, when I was younger, but it kind of fell on my lap. Really? Fell on your lap? How does that happen? Well, I guess maybe nothing really falls in your lap. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, work, we work really hard in, in what we do. Um, actually, we started our own brokerage in September, and uh, we really work hard to be a family and bring people with us on, on the journey and not just, um, not just do it ourselves. We love to have a team with us. Got it. So you have an, uh, a lot of agents working with you. Are you working with a different brand or is your own brand? We own our own company, a, a 194 Real Estate Group, uh, shameless plug. Um, but yeah, we have uh, seven agents with us, uh, excuse me, eight agents with us now. And uh, again, it's a big family. We love to learn together, grow together, uh, break bread together. Mm. Typical and, now in these times though. Yeah, that's what I realized the biggest piece of this business is when you're really breaking bread. I think the most exciting and amazing relationships I've ever, ever created have been by breaking bread with people. And that, I don't know how we're going to do this now with this video conferencing, right? So we're just going to have to get a little piece of bread and just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and do that over a video conference. But it's, um, I, it sounds amazing. So what is, what's ultimate for you? What would be success like for you? Let's say if we're sitting here, you know, five years from now. Wow, that's an incredible question. And uh, I don't know if I can answer it in a minute, but um, the, long, the short answer, I guess, would be a legacy and to leave something that my children and family could be proud of, um, you know, passed down even to their family. So my life is my legacy and I want to bring people with me on that legacy. I want to create legacies and uh, for other people as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very interesting because it's the same thing for me. I mean, my why is my children and being able to, to leave a legacy for them and, and to help those in need ultimately. So I can absolutely relate with that. That's really great. And you're covering New Jersey, I'm assuming. That's the your primary market. Yes, Sean. We're at we're basically at time. Should I? I didn't want to uh, interrupt. There's 15 you. seconds to go, Lucian. Okay. Say say that one more time, Lucian. I was asking if you, if you cover New Jersey. Yeah, we are uh, Burton County, Burton County, Northern Jersey. That's where we specialize. Excellent. Thank you. I'm so excited to have met you. You too. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Let's hear from Lucian. Thank you very much. So um, let's go. Jay, we're not going to say the score yet. So for every, any of those on um, my Facebook, let's kick on over to the Real Raw if you'd like to see more or uh, join on the Unbind the Facebook page. We're going to keep some scoring. Teresa's about to go. We'll see you in a little bit. Thanks for checking in. So um, Jay, let's go with a score. You're not going to say it. Write a score down. Gravitational pull towards Lucianne. People in the chat want to be adding in their thoughts, um, feelings, a number. 10 being absolute depth of connection, head, heart, and soul is uh, accelerating, preparing to connect at the next stage for what Lucianne would like to communicate about herself and the agreement that she's going to look to reach. Five being eh, zero being run the other way. Um, and so let's go with this. Self-assessment, Lucianne, what do you think in terms of depth of connection that you created with Jay? Um, seven. Okay, awesome. And what do you think you could have done to have enhanced that connection number? Maybe asking, maybe identifying some trigger points and some words that he, he, he's saying that he's trying to tell me that I may not have noticed. Yeah, so could I, so could I give you a little feedback? Yes, please. Yeah, listen, uh, I thought you were phenomenal. Um, in, in the first two minutes, drop the mic. You, you went, your, your energetic transference is absolutely tremendous. Your congruence is there. You're so self-assured. There's beautiful energy flowing from you to Jay. Like that is drop the mic. So you're matching and mirroring your congruence. Your fun energy was fully present. Your loving energy fully present, like clear, right? Loved then when you went back and you asked him questions about, hey, how'd you get started? So you went into where you been perfectly. Then you went to where are you? And then you even asked him, where are you going? So mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Check, 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 check. I mean, like, drop the mic, right? You asked him wonderfully. He said he mentioned that he had a son. Beautifully asked him. Like, I mean, like, textbook phenomenal in terms of the depth of listening and everything that was happening. 
an access point um, that I would offer is when, when you went, to, when Jay said he's in the real estate business, you asked him about the people with him, beautiful. I might have said, hey, Jay, sounds like everything's going great. Like, you know, what's working and how'd you get to eight people? That mm -hmm. might have been a nice accelerant. Yeah. He would have answered. And then it could have been, so, hey, Jay, like with everything that's happening and you have this beautiful vision of where you want to get to, what are some challenges? And mm -hmm. he could have opened up whatever pain is existing for him. Yeah. So what's working? What are the challenges? But I mean, for real, Lucian, you're, you're obviously, listen, you're incredibly successful and everybody who's on here is incredibly successful. You're where you are for a reason. It is super clear. And we always talk about the minor distinctions that can create even more access more rapidly. So I don't know, what are your thoughts on what I'm sharing? I love it. I love it. it, it it's a little bit um, difficult when you're under so much pressure and we have all these people watching. So maybe that threw me off a little bit, but I, I, I accept the feedback and I'm going to run with it. Thank you. Yeah. And I will tell you this, the only person that has been on thus far that um, we didn't see an access for acceleration was uh, with Les Brown. And even there though, had we, you know, had we really explored a little bit more deeply, I think there's even a couple of things that we could have accelerated there. So there's always more. If I go, there's more, right? We're always creating more uh, access to mastery, but fantastic job. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Teresa, how are you? I'm outstanding. All right. You ready to jump in? Sure. All right. So Jay, are you ready? If so, take it away. I am ready. Thank All right. You. Hold on. I'm going to set my timer. Yeah. I've that sounds good here. I'll do mine too. I just, I hate interrupting you guys. Ready? Ready. Jay, a great access point is as Teresa's getting deeper, you can go, Hey, listen, I'm really like connected. I only have about one more minute to go. So give like a one more minute to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Ready? Go. So Jay, it's lovely to meet you. Very nice um, to meet you, Teresa. Yeah. I've heard a lot about you. Um, tell me, uh, what did you do before real estate? Uh, well, there kind of wasn't a before real estate, I guess, in a way, during, uh, but I used to own a Verizon, we used to own a Verizon wireless store. Okay. In Emerson. Okay. How was that? <laughs> I mean, that might be a story for another day. Uh, that was uh, interesting. What I will say is it, um, we, we focused a lot on relationships there. We were very, we, we made ourselves very different by focusing on the clients. And you say we, so that means? Well, we is, is everything I do at this point is, is family owned. So uh, my wife and I, we own the Verizon store. Uh, my father worked for me at the time as well. Um, and then now we own our own real estate company in uh, Burton County. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Um, Bergen County is a hot spot. How is that for you guys right now? Bergen County is definitely a hot spot. Um, it, it's, it's been tough. Um, you know, we're, we're innovative. We try to stay on the cutting edge of technology and, um, you know, that's been a really big benefit right now, but fear, man, fear, fear has been really, really tough. People are afraid and including us. What have you guys done? Um, what have you done as a family to combat that? <laughs> what haven't we done as a family? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what have we done as a family to combat that? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I think, uh, self mastery. Uh, positive thinking, uh, you know, things like this where we're getting together really helps me uh, stay, stay sane and active and momentum moving forward. So where would you say, um, where would you say you're going with your real estate business? Um, I just, just to check in, I have about a minute left. Um, well, where are we going? We're, the sky's the limit. Um, you know, we have a team of eight people right now. Um, and I call it a team, although we're more like a family. Um, you know, we, we, as we rise, we all want to rise together. Um, so that's really been a focus of ours is, is making sure that our realtors feel like family um, and also our clients. I mean, it's the relationship's more important. We put our people uh, before the profit. Mm. That's nice to hear. Um, real estate is such a um, family centered world that I could see how that would work really well for you. Yes, it has so far for sure. Um, what, do you guys have children? Two children, uh, Jackson and Ava, nine and six, uh, seven, Ooh, turning nine and seven. Nine and seven, that is very fun. And what is your favorite part about being a parent? 
we're about 10 seconds. My favorite part about being a parent, so much time I get to spend with my children during quarantine. <laughs> and we're three minutes. Perfect. Right, awesome. So in the chat, let's hit what do you, what'd you feel good about um, and great about that Teresa was up to, Lucianne as well. Let's give these uh, fine, uh, incredible entrepreneurial women some love and with what they're up to and some acknowledgement. So thank you. And then um, what was present for you, Teresa? How, how do you feel? Um, I feel, I, I feel good. I do think I jumped, I like, you know, deviated a little bit from the formula. Like I followed it from the first few steps and then kind of like went off a little, but came back. I think oh, it's cool. Yeah. Cool. And what, what, what would you give yourself as a self, a self assessment in terms of death of the connection, Jay seeing his future in you? Um, oh Lord, a self assessment, Jay. What do you say? I don't know. Let's say, a, let's say a seven. That was a safe answer, Teresa. It was a safe answer. <laughs> that was a perfectly safe, exactly safe answer. Amazing. Yeah. I knew you were going to say seven. I would have bet a million dollars that seven was going to come out of your mouth. Maybe it's too bad you're not I didn't betting that. that. And I took that bet, Sean. Once I took the pause and the hesitation. So, um, okay. So, Jay, what was present for you? What what could have been some optimizations for both, uh, from your perspective, for for both Lucianne, like two sentences, and then Teresa, two sentences. Okay. So, uh, for Lucianne, I would say that she's very congruent. Um, her uh, her words and her actions definitely match her uh, tone, and she was matching and mirroring my tone really well. Um, I did feel uh, I did feel that I was heard um, and seen. For Teresa, she followed. Oh, excuse me. For uh, for Lucianne, where the optimization might be, and she already kind of self assessed that. Is uh, we didn't we went to where you've been, where you where you now, where you're going. She checked in with me in the beginning, but we didn't go to the uh, the pain portion. She even asked me what was working, which was awesome but the pain part might have brought out um, another access. So that would be my one spot. Uh, and thinking for Teresa, I saw Teresa, you know, was working through the formula, I felt it. I felt when you felt like you deviated from it because I felt the energy shift a little bit. Um, but again, this is, ner this is like super nerve wracking, but as for the questions you were asking and what you were asking of me, they were all great questions. And I'm sure that on a call or on a, in person, you know, it would have felt more natural. And so I felt, I felt good with both. Yep. So listen, Lucianne and Teresa, let's acknowledge both of you. This is not easy to do, right? <laughs> with people watching and we're being assessed, but what also is really cool access point is for all of us to realize that we're getting real time feedback about everything that happens in the world. And the more comfortable we are with being assessed, assessing ourselves and creating access and acceleration to mastery, the more we have like the exponential potential to increase. What do I mean? Like the, the entire purpose of role play and unblinded itself is the acknowledgement of the concept that all of our encounters compound to add up to very different numbers. You know, if you're getting a 0% return on your money over the course of, well, let's do it this way. Let's say that you're getting a 0% return and you put money buried in your mattress um, over a 42 year period. Um, and you originally had $10,000 and at the end of uh, 42 years, you'll still have $10,000, but it'll be worth a lot less because of inflation, but it'll still be $10,000. Under the historical uh, returns in the stock market, your money doubles every year, illustrating the potential for exponential. So at the end of your first seven year period, um, so let's say you get six doubles, you have 20,000, then 40,000, then 80,000, then 160,000, then 320,000, then $640,000 simply by having a compounding effect going on. So why do I say that? I say it because in sales and marketing, there's even more at play in the exponentiality of things because you have a leverage point. Like the level of your influence mastery is one thing. What you do with it is a second thing. So the level of your influence mastery at each step though, how well you build rapport, how well you identify pain, how well you convey your unique identity, how well you form agreements, that's where your level of mastery is. And each of those is a lever is a, that has the potential for exponential change or acceleration. And the same thing with what you do with it from how you merge ecosystems, how you convey your identity to those ecosystems, how you create frictionlessness 
how you create sales meetings and convert sales meetings. So all of those are different levers inside of our ability to create acceleration uh, through our connection and application of the formula. Teresa, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, and that's what we're here to talk about and here we're demonstrate. So would it be okay with you, Luciana and Teresa, if I jumped in and did a, a quick one with Jay to maybe illustrate a couple of different points? Is that cool? Absolutely. All right. So would that be, Luciana, would you like, would that be beneficial, you think? Yes or no? Absolutely. Really? Okay, cool. So, all right, Jay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. So, um, hey, Jay, um, and we're going to hit me, Mona, going to hit me with three minutes? Okay. So, uh, Jay, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Hey, what brings you to doing this unblinded thing? <laughs> Man, uh, well, right now I'm really focusing on bettering myself and my team and training. And, you know, we want to make more money and have more time and more magic in our life. Wow. Sounds like you're up to a bunch of stuff there. Um, and what is it that's making you want these more types of things? Money, time, magic. Why do you want it? Uh, wow. The, the deepest level of why I want it is because I want to have uh, time with my family and uh, be able to support them and leave a legacy and have my kids be really proud of me and my wife and, and what we do. Oh, brother, uh, you seem really clear and focused on why you want what you want in the current vehicle, which I want to acknowledge, because most people could not answer that question that way. And it's super deep. So from my heart to yours, you know, thank you for sharing that. The vehicle that you're engaged in is real estate. Why real estate? I've always sold things and uh, thank you for acknowledging, uh, you know, that for me, but my real estate, I never really thought about getting into. I've always been a salesperson and actually started, uh, my father and my grandfather both owned hardware stores. Uh, and I actually thought growing up that I was going to own a hardware store, uh, but that didn't really happen that way. And then we got in, I got into owning my own cell phone store, um, a whole bunch of different sales jobs. And I realized that I needed to be able to help people with bigger decisions in life than just their cell phone. Um, and real estate was something that uh, made a lot of sense to us, uh, helping people find their, their dreams and their addresses. So. Extraordinary. And how is that transition going? I know you, you mentioned you have your own brokerage, you have agents. How's all that going for you? Uh, it, it's going really well. What I can say is for a, a small boutique brokerage like ourselves, having a formalized kind of like training process is what, um, is what we were lacking the most. And that's really what drew, drew me to Unblinded um, was the training and the, um, you know, the mastery on influence. So that's, that's, that's really what, what brought us here because we want to be able to have our team grow uh, not just have us grow, but have everybody grow around us. We, you know, it's lonely if, we're, if you're not growing with people. Yeah, I keep hearing this like resonance of like team, family, us, we. Where does that come from, brother? <sighs> so it, it's the most important thing to us. Um, to us, there it is again. Uh, it's, it's not just about me. And actually, I've trained myself not to say I all the time because this is bigger than just I. So uh, it's something I'm very, very aware of and language is important to us. And it's, it's definitely about we, it's about all of us. And now in this time the world is in, it's even bigger than just the us I was thinking maybe a month and a half ago. So yeah. it, it's, it's, really, it's really changed. Yeah. And so aside from, or including the, the present challenges, like what are the biggest challenges that you're facing in, in the scaling, the we, the getting to that vision? Three minutes. The, the, biggest, the biggest problem that we're having is, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, I think it all leads back to self training yourself, training in your skills, training in your sales and your influence. And that's where we're lacking the most. I can do it myself, but I can't duplicate it. Yeah. Okay. Pause. So Lucy Ann, what would you say? Depth of connection, Jay seeing his vision, you know, his future and me. Give me an honest number. I mean, it's just like, what's the top number? Uh, well, there's no and 10. <laughs> 11. No, there's no 10. Like you almost made me cry, really. It's so good. <laughs> okay. And what, 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 what was present for you that was good? Um, you, you're, you're really listening so deeply to every word he's saying. And, and you're asking him questions based on the feedback you're getting. Right. So you're deeply thinking of everything and it's just incredible. I mean, I felt, I don't know, but I felt a little bit um, almost like 
Jay got a little emotional as he was yeah. asked, answering some of your questions there. Lucien, we say this, that 50% of the people, when you're communicating with them one-on-one -on -one, and you're truly in the formula, displaying the 10 indispensable elements, which includes thank you for the acknowledgement that makes me feel wonderful, thank you for seeing me, um, includes level five listening, mm -hmm. that 50% of those communications end in people crying because it is so unusual that people hear somebody's story. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I say it all the time, it's why Oprah says she held the microphone for 30,000 people. I see you, I hear you. What you mm -hmm. say matters to me. That's mm -hmm. the reasoning that she shares. And when you give that to people, it opens a huge access. Um, how about yourself, Jay? Did you feel connection? Yeah, of course. I, you know, it, it, you say Oprah, I say you're like Eminem, where you can basically, you listen so well to what everyone's saying and then just flip it around and in, a, in, in, the, in the most beautiful way. So you're like a freestyle rapper when it comes to this, you know? Well, thank you. Thank you. I will. Yes, and I do wear my skull cap uh, frequently with Corona and my hair is getting longer. So and I don't want to let Mona cut it. So I have a problem, Lucy and <laughs> Teresa. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. Teresa, uh, how about yourself? Uh, genuine, authentic number. Oh, I, I'd say it's definitely a 10. If, if I'm allowed to give you a 10, I'd say no, no 10s. I am never perfect. I am. So and I will. I, I will well, thank you. Or, or it could be nine in fractions. Yeah, that's uh, right. Nine point. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, was, what was resonating for you? I love how effortlessly you are able to listen and, and very um, easily slip into the access point without it seeming um, robotic in any way. No, I appreciate that. And, and so you know what makes it effortless, Teresa? Tell me, Sean is that I've worked tirelessly, tirelessly to truly keep figuring out ways to be present to people in service of them in my listening. Um, and one of the biggest access points that was not an indispensable element when I originally ran this program, and it wasn't even an, an indispensable element five years ago, but it was like the final breakthrough for me. Well, there's no final. It was the, the next level breakthrough is to unconditionally love everyone with boundaries. And when you're present to unconditionally loving people with boundaries, I want to be present in my listening. Like right now, I'm like so present to the reality that uh, I never knew Jay was going to own a hardware store, a hardware store before he thought he would. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm present to the, this is what I'm hearing from Jay, right? I'm hearing from Jay the, the, urgent, if not desperate, cries from his heart to be an example of possibility to his children, serve and deliver massively for his beautiful wife who he loves so much, and to encounter humanity in a way that he unlocks their potential, creates acceleration, and has all of those people know he cares about and loves them. Honestly, Jay, how on or off is that? Like, give me like, did I miss anything? Sean, you didn't miss, you honestly didn't, didn't miss anything. And I thought Les Brown was incredible and you just did what Les did to, to tell you the truth. So that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. And listen, I'm going to be totally real. Les is absolutely unbelievable. And I said, I would never like compete and go up against Les. I would love to, because he's the greatest I've ever seen. And so he's the greatest I've ever seen. I go with him and Tony Robbins. And I would love, you know, to have a, a real raw role play with Les and, and, and have fun and, and be pushed and stretched because he is absolute genius. So for even mentioning me in that category, Jay, it means the world to me. Uh, I say with humility, but I also love the healthiness of competition and the unlocking of our superpower. And that's exactly what we're here to do in the real raw role play. It's not about me. It's about the acceleration of people watching and listening to whole new levels because all of this is possible for all of us. Because Lucienne, do you know where I went to Columbia University as an undergrad? Do you know my sophomore year where I ate my lunch uh, most days? No. Sitting no. alone in my car. Wow. That's a true story. I would, I, never, I would never think that. Yeah, I became captain of the baseball team um, my senior year. I started all four years, but I really didn't like it there. I, I was having, you know, I was uncomfortable meeting people. I missed my friends from high school, and I really did legitimately 
That's no exaggeration. You could check with my buddies from there. You can Google me, see that I was captain. All these stories are verifiable. You can call up any of those people that play with me at Columbia and ask them, hey, sophomore year, like, where did Sean, like, did you ever eat lunch with Sean? And I, I didn't. I would sit in my car, wait for the double parking, eat my lunch, move my car back alternate side of the street because I was actually commuting back and forth. I moved home for a semester and I would eat my lunch in my car. It's not to make anybody feel bad for me. It's to simply say I was really introverted. And I was not successful at creating relationships at that point. I was respected, but I wasn't effective at like really listening and connecting with people. So all of this is accessible for folks. So it's an inspiration. Now, can I ask a quick question? You guys, anything you want. You're, you're giving your time. Thank you. When you were talking about unconditional love with boundaries, can you be more specific about what do you mean with boundaries? What does that really mean? Sure. So I, I'm wide open writing this stuff. Um, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, Lucien, of a variety of different types, okay? I would say the biggest, unquestionably, the biggest mistake I made is um, not having good boundaries with people. And it could be people I was just getting to know and gave them too much access too quickly. Uh, it could also, uh, it was also in the space of uh, people I, I cared about, people in my family, people I was in personal relationships with, people I was in business relationships with. And um, so two things happened. One is I, I gave too much too soon and I gave too much too long. And a lot of these situations, I used to blame the other people. And so in, in some of the caretaking tendencies that I had, because we could mistake love for having poor boundaries. And boundaries mean that they're effective um, agreements and relationship pieces between two people. So I was massively caretaking. I loved doing beautiful things for people. I loved sharing. I loved taking care of folks. I'm like, I got it. Don't worry. I got it. I got it. I got it. I took a lot on my shoulders in business partnerships, also friendships and personal relationships. And it led to, though, me building up some resentment. And then other times it led to me getting taken advantage of. So what I mean by healthy boundaries is really clear agreements that it's not tit for tat, but there's, there's like an equity. There's a harmony in alignment in where you're moving towards and what both people are contributing um, and honoring um, the relationship. So I say loving people unconditionally boundaries because this is, could be controversial. It's in the modules and mastery, we talk about it. But I, I share that there's people who, my perception is they've acted in ways that were, uh, their acts were wrongful towards me and it hurt a lot. And I used to hold blame and judgment and those sorts of things. So blame and judgment will be the opposite of unconditional love. But where boundaries come in, some of those people just don't belong in my life anymore, Lucian. Okay. So um, I can love them unconditionally. I could have forgiven them. I could pray for them and decide that we're just not going to have contact and communication and they're not going to be part of my life. Not that I have hatred or blame anything. It just, you know, it doesn't work. It's not healthy. Same thing for people that are in prison for robbery, murder, even more heinous things potentially than murder. I think there are some. And we could still have empathy in our heart, love in our heart, realizing that most of those people were abused, neglected, they had all kinds of problems. And it doesn't mean we make excuses for them, but we can forgive, we can love and have boundaries and say, yeah, they belong in prison for the rest of their life though. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're up for round two. And this has been, um, I know, Teresa, how's this going for you? Awesome. Awesome. So we're at round two. And in round two, Lucy Ann, because you selected to go first in round one, um, do you want to go first or second in round two? I want to go first again. Whoa, look at this. So here's what we're doing now. So you've connected with Jay. And what we're, for, for both of your purposes, we're going to make Jay somebody that everything is the same, except he doesn't own his own brokerage. He is in real estate. And both of you, you know, fine um, folks are looking to recruit Jay. So you've heard from him about where he is, what, he, what his hopes and desires are. So it's, now it's time for you to deliver in three minutes your identity and look to reach an agreement with Jay. And that agreement could be whatever's natural. Okay. It doesn't have to be that Jay agrees to come work with you, but, but it's that maybe Jay agrees that he's gonna be really open and considering it for a longer conversation. So, or it could be that he agrees to work with you. Whatever you feel is natural, but it begins with you sharing your heroic, unique identity, who you are, what you are, your story, and then moving into agreement in three minutes. Sound good, Lucianne? Sounds great. All right, great. Jay, take it away. Got my timer. All right. 
So Jay, I am very, very impressed with your story. And um, it sounds like you're doing great. And there's still an opportunity for you to be able to take it to the next level. So I'm very curious to know, um, what is it that is not working for you in the current environment right now? Um, you know, it, it, I, not, the, not, that I, it's not the lack of opportunities, it's not the lack of people out there, it's not the lack of, of, of quality uh, employees, because we have great employees, but it's trying to duplicate what I do um, again, and trying to teach what I do seems to be difficult as well. You know, I thought it, I thought it just inside of me, I didn't know how to actually communicate that. Okay. Over the course of your career, I'm very curious, have you had a partner or another agent that you felt had the same skills you had and the success that you could see them reaching your level? Yes. And what do you think the traits are for that person? What is it that they brought to the table that made you identify them as someone just like yourself? Passion, uh, integrity, um, desire, um, a work ethic. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough to find a work ethic now, uh, nowadays as well. Great. So I think this may be a perfect opportunity for me to tell you a little bit about me. So I started in real estate about 18 years ago. I came here from Brazil. I didn't know how to speak English and was broke. Um, came from a poor background, um, but I always thought I was rich. When I came to the United States, I really knew here was my opportunity to, to grow. Started as an agent and grew into being an assistant manager, manager. And if you could see behind me, I have shelves of awards because my team have really successfully um, done a great job. And, you know, because I was the leader, I got credit for it, but really it was never me, it was the team that we've assembled. So it's been an extraordinary ride. And since then I launched my own company and it sounds like you have so much integrity and it really, I've gotten to where I am because of sweat and tears and the amount of hard work I've put it into building not only my personal brand, but also developing everything I could to help other people grow. And I'm just getting started. And I would love to know what your goals are and if there is a way for us to be able to really uh, merge ecosystems and help each other grow. Would you have anything in mind when I ask that question? Uh, I, I only have about 10 or 15 seconds. If, if we wanted to meet, you know, talk about this further, what would be the next step? Okay. I would love to meet with you um, maybe next week. Yeah, sure. Or whatever time works for you. Okay, we'll do, I guess we should just come up with the date now. <laughs> next Tuesday sounds good to me. Great. Awesome job. Awesome job, Lucianne. Um, very, very nice. Um, I loved you dropping the came from Brazil, had no money couldn't speak English. I mean, that is so utterly inspirational and clearly heroic. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, a couple of quick access points. I may have shared your higher net worth, you know, the fact that you're, you're working with people that most people wouldn't be able to access. Yeah. That would probably be something cool and unique that you could um, share with people that you'd be able to train them and lead them to duplicate. Is that true that you could do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I, just, I usually go into that because there's a few components of my business because we don't just sell luxury real estate. We also provide uh, yachting, uh, luxury car, oh. and aviation as part of the service. So it's a one-stop shop for their luxury needs. So most people are very interested in that. It's just because we don't have enough time. <laughs> but how about this? When, when, I love it. When Teresa's done, I'll be you, and we'll see if we can build that in as a quick access point for you. And this is recorded so you can listen to it again because that's like some drop the mic stuff you got going on there. So awesome stuff. So Teresa, how are you? I'm outstanding. Outstanding. All right. Are you ready? Yes. You are not sounding ready. You're almost sounding I'm, ready. Are you I'm ready? Ready. Awesome. So ready, Jay? Take it away. Ready. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay, thank you so much for um, taking my call today and sharing with me a little bit about yourself and your family and where you're at. Um, is it safe to say that, or accurate to say that what you're really looking for on the next steps or in the next steps of your um, real estate business are a, is a broker partner 
someone who's going to have your back and help you create the systems and the training you need for your team? Um, that's a good question. I guess I never looked at it from, from that angle. Um, what, what, do you, what do you mean? What, what, is it that, what is it that you do? Or what, what is it that you could do for me then? Well, would, would it be okay with you if I just shared a little bit about myself? Absolutely, please. So I got into real estate 18 years ago because I needed to do something quickly. I became a single parent um, of two boys and needed to provide for my family. Um, so ha being in that environment where I had no other source of income and this was all I had, I had to learn how to prioritize. I had to learn to weed out what wasn't important in my business. I had to learn how to take very seriously, not just my clients, but my colleagues that my co brokes on the other side. And in that 18 years of of building that, not only did, did I, I accelerate to um, the broker of record managing for more than one brand, now being in an office of 170 plus agents, the last three years I was president of the local board of realtors. I'm a national delegate, I vote at the NAR level. I um, was successfully brokered to associations of realtors. So we went from 2000 members to 4,500 members. And I, at the time was the chair of the board. So I had two boards of 15 people that I had to merge and navigate through that process. So I don't share that with you to toot my own horn, but I share it with you so that you could see the kind of person that I am and the kind of partner that I would be to you in your business. Wow. Wow. I have like 30 seconds. So like if this was, I was interested, how would, how would we go about that? So if you think that that, that's something that I can provide you, that it would be valuable to you in your future. What I'd love to do, Jay, is just set up a time to, to get together and have a cup of coffee and talk more about it. Virtual coffee sounds good to me. Beautiful job, Teresa. Beautiful job. So under time, under time. Let's pop some scores into the chat for uh, Lucianne and for Teresa as well. Some applause for what they did wonderfully, um, you know, there. Beautiful job. Teresa, what I, what I love that you did um, is there is a, an immense humility, an immense sort of just like the person next door-ness to what you're doing in the recruiting process. So beautiful. Um, I love when you talked about what kind of partner you could be. Um, fantastic. If I, if I had a, an enhancement space, and this goes back to the, the last round as well, I think a little bit more energy uh, variance, like with your vocal qualities, a little bit more variance would create a little bit more emotional and energetic transference. So I wouldn't mind keeping it that entire way you're doing it because there's a beautiful rhythm to it. And obviously it's working massively. Um, in terms of some of the most Zeus-like highest producing people that you might be recruiting, um, mm -hmm. I would think perhaps at the end of just going, so listen, like that's like a shift and creating a disruption for them, a shift into, so listen, this is who I am. That's how I built 178 people working for my agency. And I'd love to partner with you, but I just want to deliver this. We're about, a lot of people could be about rah-rah. A lot of people could be about hype. We're about results. We're about integrity, we're about congruence, and that's where you're gonna get if you work with us. I am no different in this discussion than I am anywhere else. You know, like, does that resonate or no? Yes. Okay, what do you, what do you think? What's present for you when I share that? Uh, I, think, I think the energy shift and then rolling it into a um, concise, in my mind, I'm processing it like a concise bullet point ending of like, Here's the three things. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would, so like there was some, the energy was pretty neutral. Um, I would drop a little deeper into the goddess side and then contrast it with stepping into deeper in the Zeus side. So you're kind of just like there, mm -hmm. I would, I would move into the one, then deep into the other. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So maybe it sounds slightly like this. So we're going to wrap up shortly. I'll go quick and let's say that I'll be Lucianne. 
for now because I said it would be because I was U.S. time, Teresa. So, um, so Jay, thanks so much for sharing uh, where you are and all those cool things that are working and even some of the challenges. It's clear to me that your heart is such a huge part of this and you want to create massive impact for your family and for other people. Am I hearing that correctly? Thank you for that acknowledgement. You're hearing that right on. Right on. Yeah. So would it be okay if I shared a little bit about myself? Of course. Yeah, real quick. So again, my name is Lucy Ann, and I came to this country not knowing that we were broke, but broke, and not being able to speak English. And so as you think about working with me, please see me as somebody who has been committed in their heart, ambition to being a mom and loving two children, having this massive desire to have impact, just like you're sharing. And that process that I built and scaled has led us to have connections with our client base, not just in real estate, but in aviation, yachting. We developed an incredibly high net worth clientele, and we've also developed uh, celebrities in, in our uh, profile and our programs. And I don't share any of that with you because none of it matters except for this. Like, I don't care who somebody is or who they think they are. You know, I love people for their heart. I share it because, listen, there's celebrities just like other folks um, have a need. And it also helps to create acceleration impact when you are working with some people who have a higher net worth. And that's a part of what we do. We also work with people who don't have a high net worth. But that's something that a lot of places can't teach you to do. And if you work with me, my heart to yours we can teach you to create that acceleration and access to folks like that. And I'm not sure, does that resonate with you, Jay? Like what's present for you when I share that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible to think that, you know, we've had access to that kind of uh, training to be able to even capitalize on that kind of network or not capitalize, but to merge with that kind of ecosystem. Yeah. And so, so what's present for you when I say, Hey, let's explore this. And I mean it sincerely. I want to know like, where does that land for you in terms of your senior future? Uh, it makes me it makes me want to have further conversations for sure to see where this could lead. Yeah. yeah. Well, what what if anything would be your biggest concern though about doing something together in this space of merging? Uh, my biggest concern would be losing my own identity. Um, you know, we work really hard to create the um, uh, to create our image. Right, let's pause for the sake of time. We'll pause. Lucienne, how does that resonate for you? It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I would I would definitely want to work for you. <laughs> Well, that was you. So it's just being you, right? I was, I was listening. Yeah. In, right. Yeah. Amazing. So with this said, um, we're going to be drawing to a close momentarily. Um, but right now, and this is the, the challenging, but real part of real raw, uh, and moving ourselves forward. Um, Jay, do you have any access to some of the scoring in the chat? Have you seen any of that? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I will, I will tell you right now. So, uh, we have dimple, saying both ladies are in the nines. We have Donna, uh, same thing. Both ladies are in the nines. Uh, we have, I got, we're, we're, we're a ton, of, a ton, a ton of nines. Nines across the board here. And okay. Sean, you got a 9.99 here as well for yourself. Well, thank you. So what, what we're gonna do is, right, because I wanna make sure that we score it appropriately and accurately. So we're not gonna share yet um, who is the advancer, and the other thing is every, um, from every week, we have a wild card. So it's entirely possible that both of these uh, amazing entrepreneurial um, women will advance. Um, but in any final, final takeaways, um, let's start with you, Teresa. What are your takeaways from today's experience to create some more access and acceleration for what you're up to? Oh, Sean, I don't know. I say, um, I'm good, the, to me, the, the takeaway would be the variance of energy, right? Not getting awesome. stuck in one modality. Very cool. Awesome. And how did you feel about the role play? Like how, how could we serve you better or people better on the role plays? I thought the role play was great. I actually think putting people in a position where they're forced to do it in front of other people um, is the best way to accelerate them. Really? Thank you, Teresa, for that. And I really appreciate you being, you being on. Um, how about you, uh, Lucianne? What's uh, the takeaways for you today? Well, at the very last, um, when you role play on my behalf, um, I realized that I could easily, with a short period of time, integrate the value so the other person can see where they would benefit and what's in it for them to be part of the team. Um, 
while I didn't integrate that pre, uh, before when I was doing the role play. But overall, it's wonderful to go through this process. You know, you're a very humble person. So is Jay and so is Teresa. So it's very comfortable and, and easy to go through this. Oh, well, thank you, Lucien. And, and for everybody, um, understand this. If we work at things in our writing, writing it down first, rewriting it, innovating, tightening, we have an incredible ability to convey a lot in a short period of time. So one of the access points for these short time frames is to help people see what they don't see about creating disruption. Like, Lucien, you sharing that background, that concisely, or Teresa, 178 agents, they're both like drop the mic access points both of you have to create a wait wait a minute who who are you right and for both of you it's remarkable and extraordinary uh, i am super thankful jay i'm thankful to you for jumping in um today and, and serving in the role play um we're going to be on the huddles consistently want to create massive access thank you everybody for listening and watching for all the comments in the chat please tell us what you like best what you can see is access points for growth and improvement because our idea with this is to make this something completely extraordinary. And so Lucy and Teresa, um, if either of you have the opportunity to come back in the influence office for next week, is that something that you'd be interested in doing? Of course. Cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. And, and we'll try to lock it down for you judging some other folks. Now you have a little bit more context for what we're doing. And I'm super grateful, super grateful to everybody. This is Unblinded Real Raw Role Play. I am Sean Callagy, and we will see you soon on the huddle tomorrow and on the programs tonight for those in mastery. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Pleasure meeting you guys. Thanks. Thank you.